In this lecture, I'd like to show you guys an application of recurrence relations to calculus. In particular, we're going to talk about differential equations. So a differential equation, so I'll just write this out, a differential equation, which from now on, that took so long to write, we'll just call it a DE from now on, out of just laziness, right? But a differential equation is an equation that relates a unknown function to its derivatives. So it's going to relate an unknown function, which we usually call y, right, to its derivatives. Now, we're going to study just very, very simple differential equations here. So the kind that we're going to study are going to either be first order or second order. So first order differential equation, this is FODE, F-O-D-E, first order. This just means that we can write down a formula for the first derivative, y prime, as some function of y and x, okay? So the x here is the independent variable. So for example, our differential equation might be something like y prime equals x squared times y. All right, so notice we have an equation for the derivative that's in terms of the independent variable and uh, the unknown function itself. So uh, there are so many different possibilities here. We could just have x plus y. We could have y prime is just equal to 2y, and x could be um, not involved in the differential equation. And there, uh, like I said, there are, there are many, many different possibilities here. So um, this is a first order differential equation. As far as the second order, that's the other one we're going to study, second order differential equation, as far as these go, uh, just by comparing, this should mean that we should be able to solve for the second derivative in terms of the function, the independent variable, and the first derivative, right? So in general, this will look like y double prime equals some function that relates y prime, y, and x. Um, this is very general. We're not going to study these this way. We are going to study the very special case um, so here I'll write this for us. So at some point in your in your mathematical life, you will study the general second order differential equations. But for us, we're just going to study the case when the differential equation can be written in this form: y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y equals zero. Now this has this kind of equation has a name. So the first thing I should say here is that these two parameters b and c these are going to be real numbers for us. So B and C are real numbers. And this kind of equation is called a second order linear homogeneous constant coefficient. A whole bunch of names, but these names should sound familiar because these are the same kind of names that came, that showed up when we were defining recurrence relations, right? So this is what we just defined here. This is going to be our second order linear homogeneous. So the homogeneous is the zero here constant coefficient. So that's the b and the c. I spelled constant wrong, right? But constant coefficient. All right, and so this is the only kind that we're going to study. Now what we want to do is we want to try to find what's called a power series solution to this equation. So a power series is just a series, and I'm not going to get into the details of how, why exactly or how exactly our function can be represented as a power series, but a power series is a function, let's just call it y because that's what it's going to be, our unknown function we're going to assume has this format, okay, or this formula. So for us, you know, again, what I'm saying now can be done in more generality in a later course, but as far as we're concerned right now, our function is just going to be written as the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of a sub n x to the power n. So a power series is really just a polynomial that ends up having infinitely many terms. So we have a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus all the way up to a sub n x to the n and then forevermore. So if you cut it off here, it looks like a polynomial of degree n, but then it keeps going and it keeps going forever. So this is called a power series. Um, it's, called, it's centered at zero, etc. The key here though is to know the power series we just have to know the coefficient sequence, right? So if we can if we can describe the coefficient sequence a sub n, then we will know our power series. Okay, we will know the power series completely. 
It turns out that because a power series is a lot like a polynomial, you, we can do all the calculus that we're used to doing with polynomials, we can do this to our power series. So, we, in other words, we can take derivatives, right? So if this is our, our power series y, then y prime is going to be equal to, and I'm actually going to look at these terms right here, right now, because we know how to take the derivatives over here, the a sub 0, a sub 1, those are the sequence, right? So those are real numbers, those are, those are numbers. So when we take the derivative, this one is gone, so we have 0, plus the next term is just a1, derivative of, of a linear function is a constant, and then the next one is 2a2 times x, plus the next one will be 3a3 x squared, and then we get to the general term. So the general term becomes n a sub n x to the n minus 1. All right, and so here we can see how, that we're, how we're going to write this in our sigma notation, how we're going to put this back in our series notation, right? And so what we find is that y prime is equal to, it starts at 1. The first coefficient here starts at 1. So n from 1 to infinity, uh, and then the term here is the general term, right? n a sub n x to the n minus 1. All right, and it turns out that we can, if we want, and sometimes you want to do this, sometimes you don't, but because this is an n minus 1, we want to kind of jack that up 1 to make it just an n. That means that all these have to go up 1 as well, but this one has to go down 1. Okay, so this, this series is equivalent to writing, oops, excuse me, uh, sum. So n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1, a sub n plus 1 x to the n. All right, so these two are equivalent ways to write the same series. And it turns out y double prime, so here's a recommended exercise to work out the details of this. Take the derivative of y prime to get y double prime, and what you'll find is that y double prime can be written as n, the sum n goes from 2 to infinity of n minus 1 times n times a sub n all times x to the power n minus 2. And this can be shifted as well to be to be written uh, similar to this one. And this will then be the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, x to the n. Okay, so these are, these are um, power series representations. Now, if we take anything from this, what are we going to take from this? We're going to say, all right, we've got formulas, formulae, formulae, however you want to say this, formulas for the power series of our function and our derivatives. And the idea now is to, so in the context of uh, recurrence relations and solving the differential equation, the idea is to plug in these power series representations into this differential equation. I'll write it down for the second order one. And I have examples in these slides uh, following this, this video. I have examples of how to solve a first order using this method and a second order linear constant coefficient homogeneous uh, using this same method. Okay, so uh, let's do it. So let's go back to this example where we have y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y equals zero. And we want to plug in the formulas for these power series. All right, so this then becomes the sum n goes from 0 to infinity. I'm just going to use the, the 0, the, the ones that I've highlighted here. So n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n minus 2, x to the n, plus capital B, that's a constant, b is a constant here, times the power series for y prime. This is the power series for y prime. This is n plus 1, a sub n plus 1, x to the n, and then finally, c, again, constant, times this power series. So this is the power series of just the terms themselves, right? This is just y. And that whole, that whole sum equals 0. And so at this point, what we can do, it turns out that what we can do is we have all of these x's, right, that have the same power, and they're all being added up. And it's important that they're being added up starting with the same index. All right, and so we want to try to combine this all into a single sum, but to do that, we need 
these coefficients, remember these are constants, so they can go inside the sum. It's the distributive property actually, right? So these constants need to go inside the sum, and then we can write this entire differential equation. Well, now it's no longer a differential equation, right? We can write this entire summation um, as a single summation. So what we get then, this is the sum 0 to infinity of, let's just write down all the parts, but factor out the x to the n. That's going to be way over here to the right. So we're going to have n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n minus 2, all right, that's it, plus, the next one's going to be b times n plus 1, times a sub n plus 1, that's it, plus the next one is going to be c times a sub n, the x to the n factored out from each one of these has to go here, it's still part of the summation, so these brackets are still, um, these are just uh, gathering the coefficient, right, and this whole thing must equal zero. And it turns out, so by some properties of linear algebra, some stuff that we don't need to worry about too much, it turns out that th the only way for this power series to equal zero for all x, remember this, this is a function, right? So this is the function that equals zero at this point. The only way for this to equal zero for all choices of x is for the coefficients to equal zero. So what we do now is we set the coefficient here, we set this formula equal to zero. All right, and what we end up with is n plus two times n plus one, a sub n minus two plus b, remember that's gonna be a, a number, right, in any applications that we do, any examples that we do. Um, I kept writing a n plus one here, this should be n minus one at every step. Okay, that should be n minus one. Should it, or did I copy this wrong up here? Oh, I had that backwards, right? This one should be n plus 2, and this should be n plus 1, so that was right. And so then we have plus c, a sub n, but this has to equal 0. All right, this always has to equal 0, and then watch, watch what we can do. We can solve this. We have uh, terms of a sequence. Here's the n plus 2 term, right? We have we can solve for this in terms of the n plus 1 and the n term. So these are the two preceding terms. So we can now write this as n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n plus 2. This is now going to equal minus b times n plus 1, a sub n plus 1, minus c times a sub n, right? And then we can divide through by this, and we can just have a formula. a sub n plus 2 equals negative b times n plus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 minus c times a sub n over n plus 2 times n plus 1. All right, and then you can do some canceling here if you want, or you can combine like terms uh, and just make this a single fraction, whatever, whatever works here. Uh, this one has an a sub n plus 1 that I've left off, doing a lot of careless uh, forgetting of terms here, so be careful. But these two will cancel, right? And so let's write out the one last step. What we end up with, this is now a recurrence relation, right? And this has got to be true for n uh, greater than or equal to what? To just to zero, right? So when n is greater than or equal to zero, here's our formula. Now, to actually solve for, for the entire thing, uh, you would need some initial data. You, sh you would need a sub zero and a sub one as your initial data. Right. So once you know the initial data, then you can actually solve for the the sequence entirely. Now you can't use the method of characteristic roots for this one because even though our differential equation had constants, right, constant coefficients, we do end up with n's over here on the right hand side. There are n's on the right hand side of this equation. So let's write down our final recurrence relation for this differential equation. So here's our recurrence relation, we end up with a sub n plus 2 equals negative b over n plus 2 times a sub n plus 1 minus c over n plus 2 times n plus 1 all times a sub n. All right, and depending on what a, uh, b and c are and these initial conditions, the initial data that, that we have, if, if we even have initial data, then we can at least find the first few terms um, by just by investigation here, and maybe, maybe, if we're lucky, we can write down a nice pattern, a nice formula 
um, for the differential equation.